Hi everyone, welcome back to Viv's One Take Review. Today I'm going to explain how I chose my barefoot hiking boots. Um, I have my criteria, which might be different to yours, but I thought I'd share with you what I consider when I research for, for the pair of boots. Um, so that like hopefully it'll help you make your own choice um well as you can see here those who are researching probably know that this this winner is the joe nimbo wonder toe um barefoot hiking boots um so this review is a continuation of my last review about um the pair that i've given up on now which is the vivo barefoot uh, FG tracker um, which I will put a link below um, my main problem with it with this pair is that um, I don't know if it happens to other barefoot hiking boots but like as I walk on these shoes um, this part starts to split this is actually quite a new pair uh, that belongs to my partner so it hasn't well it started to happen already like he's got a few replacements and this is kind of one of the newest one and it's still starting to split over here um if you go to my previous review uh you could see the state of my shoes um it just got to a point that i think um i just can't carry on using that um i did say in my last review that i'll try and glue it back together and see if it's worth doing because I like everything else about the shoes is only the splitting and it causing it to be like not waterproof that I'm not completely happy about um to be honest um I have to confess that I haven't made a very good job in like gluing that I tried it once kind of like 12 hours before a hike and I didn't really give a chance for the glue to set and then I went on a hike and then the, the shoes split even more uh so I, well, it's my fault that I haven't really got given it a chance, but I just thought that, well, well, I just didn't really have time to take care of that shoes and I contacted Vivo, they're happy to take the shoes back and I just sent it back. Um, Vivo, like on the customer service side, is brilliant and there's no problem in returning the shoes at all. And uh, I suppose if you're looking for just a casual pair of shoes, I'll still recommend them. But it's just a Vivo uh, barefoot tracker. It's just not really for me. Um, so you could see I'm a big fan of, a, of barefoot shoes. Uh, it really heals my knees that I have pain for many, many years. Uh, like I'm going to leave you guys to go back to my old video uh, to see me rambling about how much I like that it has resolved that problem. So if you're like, if this is the first time you're thinking about whether you want to buy a pair of foot shoes or not, uh, go back to that video and see like how it has transformed um, my health and my posture and everything. Um, so yeah, firstly, I just want to thank all the comments I have and all the people that have watched my review it really encouraged me to put another review up like i'm still very new to like posting things online and i want to be as genuine and as helpful as possible and i pay for all these products i'm not sponsored by anything and i just want to help the community in like making their choice um this also means that like i haven't tried every single pair of hiking boots i did before i bought these pair of boots do a lot of research and come to a conclusion. So I think like this journey is what most people will actually go through when they are not sponsored by others and have the chance to try all the shoes before they buy. Um, so I'm just gonna share with you my experience and my process of researching and what I consider. Um, yeah, so when I, gave up on these ones well to be honest um they are so comfortable that i didn't want to give it up and i still look around vivo and see if there's alternative but anyway like when i research for what hiking shoes to buy um i looked at a number of options 
so it includes zero which is like slightly cheaper end of the market and it looks like they've got quite a good product and lens which is like similar price as vivo barefoot but maybe slightly more expensive for their like proper waterproof leather version of the shoes um these joe nimbles uh wonder toe um vivo as you know already uh, there's another two brand called Morel and uh, Ribbon Five Fingers, which is like, quite popular in the uh, trail running or barefoot running world. Um, they have a few options that are like more geared towards hiking. Um, so, um, so I considered all these six brands and I have a set of criteria, which is quite personal. So some of these criteria might not apply to you. So like don't buy a Joe Nimble Wonder Toe just because I bought it. Because like my my criteria or my need, I'm sure is completely different to yours. But I'm just going to explain out what my needs are and which pair I find in my research. Which will satisfy or like not satisfy those needs so then hopefully like you can come up to your own conclusion of which is the best for you so my first criteria that is that like i want it to be high ankle high ankle kind of give you a bit more protection at the ankle which um is not really needed in terms of twisting your ankle in the barefoot shoes world because like as i explained in my last videos and as you could see in most reviewer uh, explaining how barefoot shoes work it is just very rare like hot nearly no chance at all that you will twist like this um you have to like just i don't know like go all the way over 45 degrees walking that way before you twist so uh, it's just really unlikely oops Sorry about that. Um, but I want high ankle also because it just gives me a bit more protection if I am like walking through like brambles or spiky area of a muddy field. Um, I would prefer that I don't get stunk um, when I'm like going really into the wild. Um, and also, I have really, really cold feet and having a pair of shoes that wrapped all the way up to the ankle just keep my my feet and my whole body so much warmer and it is just a practice I have for all shoes. Um, when I get to the winter, I only wear high ankle boots so like there's just no question about that. So um, you can see that this is a very personal thing and uh, you might not um, have to consider that. So that kind of takes uh, Morel and Vivum Five Fingers out of the equation because they don't actually do those high ankle ones. Um, I did, during my research, decided to buy a pair of Vivum Five Fingers before these ones. Um, first, mainly because like at the time I need to go on a hike and I haven't made up my decision. And Vivum on some of the website was doing a big sale and I... I don't know i just find that it seems like a really go good option that everyone like kind of recommended so i bought a pair um and i will put up a review later on that one as well that's that's actually quite good but um probably i'd say vibram would probably be very good for trail running if that's your thing but if you're going into the wild and you're mainly walking with a big backpack then I would prefer something that is more more solid and more, give you a bit more protection. But like the Vibram is definitely like if you're like running in a like muddy path, but that is like you know where the path is and there's not a lot of like um, very tall grass, then that's a really good choice as well. Um, so uh, my second uh, criteria is the waterproofness of the shoes um well by waterproofness i don't mean what they market it as but like what the reality is so say for example vivo um their shoes are marketed as completely waterproof so as lems 
but um, because of the split part here that will eventually happen w within one or two hikes so after the one or two hikes it just becomes not waterproof at all so there's just no difference uh, it doesn't really matter what they market it at and I kind of come to realize that well maybe a hundred percent waterproof is not even a good thing because like because if you do fall into a river the hundred percent waterproof also means a hundred percent not going to dry in the sun so like giving away some of the waterproofness is not so much of a bad thing if so long as you think that the shoes can kind of quickly dry with a bit of sunshine and also um that is one of the reasons why i bought the vibram shoes because like actually when you think about if the shoes are kind of slightly thinner they will dry quicker so it will make the whole um feeling of like how how much how damp it is how damp your feet are um is a much better like feeling if it dries quicker so um at the end um i choose um these uh joe nimbo which is which they didn't claim to be waterproof and i would agree with that claim that uh, when i go on a walk and if i did go on really muddy or like even watery paths at the end of the day uh, the shoes like the inside of my feet uh, of, of the shoe and my feet are a bit damp but the dampness is not at a level that bothers me at all and especially like um so there's a sole within these pair of shoes and if you wear it with the sole I often find what I often find is that when I take the sole out the the actual bottom part of of the inside of the shoes is quite wet but it is not really wet it's only a slightly a slight damp on the top of the sole so it is not bothering my feet and uh, well that's the balance to have isn't it like so long as it doesn't bother the feeling of how your feet feel then it doesn't really matter that it's not a hundred percent waterproof I think um, I'm just gonna put these on the side for now um, so yeah, I'd say it's a good balance to have um, for for the waterproofness. Um, and then the, my third criteria is um, the the sole, the outer sole itself. Um, the all the Joe Nimble shoes are with uh, Vibram soles, which is like one of the most uh, one of the best sole in the market that is famous for is grippiness. Um, so when I research around all the other brand, um, I, I chose this one at the end, mainly because um, even though I don't like this, the split part of um, Avivo and Lems actually pr um, claim that they're 100% waterproof, which I thought that was what I was looking for, but then like when I look at the review of Lems as well as Zero, um, Zero. The good point about Zero is this price. It's much cheaper than all the other ones that I talked about. Um, but when I looked into the review of Lems and um, and Zero, um, most of the review says it's not as grippy as Vivo, and um, I think that I'm not. I'm not very good at balancing or anything so like I think if anything I would want the shoes to be at least as grippy as Vivo was and uh, well that's kind of made me choose this pair of shoes at the end um, because like the Vibram sole is uh, the most grippy in the market Um, my fourth criteria again is a super personal criteria is um it's availability in the uk um so i am actually quite tempted by the lems and the zero but um because they have much less of a presence in the uk um so uh, 
uh, I think in terms of um, future repairs and warranty, um, I, I'm sure that they are really good companies that will look after you, but I might have to like uh, take up the cost of sending it, sending the shoes back to another country for repair or returns, which is not really what I want to do in the future. Um, so on that basis, I might be a bit biased because uh, Joe Nimble actually have an office in the UK and also give a three year warranty of the um, of the manufacturer of the soles uh, of of the whole pair of shoes. So I know that um, within the next three years, if I have any problem, I could just send it back at quite a cheap cost or maybe no cost um, and get it repaired or replaced. Uh, yeah, so I suppose um, if you live in uh, another part of the world, that kind of make you have a bias of a completely different brand. Uh, it is something that's worth thinking about when you're spending like nearly 200 pounds or dollars on a pair of shoes. Um, well, actually, uh, so I'm going to explain the other benefits that I find in these pair of shoes, which is um, not part my particular consideration at the time, but what I find as like one of the most appealing thing about the shoes. Um, so the other benefits include this kind of, you, you only know this when you've actually got it at home. It's just impossible to find out from pictures from online, but like the quality of the leather is just so much better than any other shoes that I've ever had. Um, it is kind of, it feels soft, um, but like thick. Um, it's the kind of leather, it's a sign of that the leather has been treated very well uh, when it was manufactured. Um, it's the kind of leather that like if you go buy a sofa, one of the most expensive sofa will have that smooth and soft feeling is similar to that. Um, so it kind of shows probably, well I, I'm not sure whether I should infer it like that, but it kind of feels like the manufacturer or the company owner have thought about what quality um, the customer deserves when they spend like nearly 200 pounds on a pair of shoes. So I kind of, it kind of makes me trust all the other parts more in terms of wear and tear and how it was made. Um, but like time is to tell. Um, yeah, by the way, uh, these are still quite new. I've only used it for one long hike, which is like four days long and another short hike, which is like a few hours in the neighborhood. So um, I can't really say that I've used it for a long time and they will last forever. But like this is what I've got to so far. Um, the other thing is, I think, quite unique to this shoes and also other hiking boots that are not barefoot. Um, this is pretty much the only one that I find uh, for the tongue. It is like linked to the other part, so there's no gap here. Um, so this kind of, well, goes back to the waterproofness that I require. It means that like... Um, water is not going to go in through the gap and uh, even though it's not completely waterproof um, compared to this there is an actual gap that if you fall into a river um, your shoes are gonna just get wet even when you're not that far in um yeah and uh, the other thing i really like is about the sizing uh, in my last video i mentioned that um before I switch to barefoot shoes, I wear a size four, and then after I got comfortable with barefoot shoes, I like to have a bit more space, or maybe even just because that your shoes, because your feet are not squashed, they kind of relax a bit, and then I turned into buying a size five for these pair. But then I also mentioned that size five is kind of only just right, but on the large side, side and uh, when I take the insole out it was just completely way too big for me. For Joe Nimble they believe that they need to make shoes in half sizes 
So that's quite good. Uh, I actually download their sizing guide and like so the sizing guide is a a4 size picture that you can actually put your feet on and see whether that is the right size for you so it's got a picture of uh, a foot and then you put your foot foot on top and see whether that's the right size um so i i was able to choose four and a half uh which is like not an option for most other barefoot hiking boots and uh, I find that it fits me perfectly and I think that's the right size for me. Um, yeah, so all these are the benefit of Joe Nimble. Um, one thing that I also want to mention that you might want to consider is that like um, the problem that I had with Vivo where the toe box splitting is splitting. Um, it looks like the shoe is glued on a lot better compared to Vivo, um, but like, like I said again, time would tell. I'm not quite sure whether it will be um, lasting as much as, as long as I hope it would. It looks like it will, but the other thing that I come to consider is that like actually leather. Well, this leather is good. It's stretchy. So um, it will probably last longer than the other one. But ultimately, leather is not as elastic as, as some other material like nylon uh, or like just any non-leather material, um, which kind of means that like if you walk, there will be a pressure point that if the leather doesn't stretch enough, then it will start to break the glue. Um, so before I bought these, I actually looked at the Joe Nimble website and they have a few pair, a few pairs which are vegan and recycled. And I was actually going to buy the recycled vegan one. Uh, well, mainly because I kind of, I'm leaning more and more towards vegan nowadays. Um, I'm not very strict, but like whenever I have the option, I would prefer that. Um, but like, unfortunately, um, the, the, all of the vegan ones when I, at the time of purchase, uh, ran out of stock. So like, I, I knew I was going to go on a hike, um, in a week and I really need to buy one. And I ended up choosing this, which is, which I'm very happy with, but like, I am guessing, and it's only a guess that the vegan ones will have even less of a major problem that I had that I don't want to repeat, which is like that part splitting. Um, yeah, so that's something that you could consider if you think that leather is not necessary and you would you would consider or you'd prefer buying vegan. Um, then the I think jo the Joe Nimble vegan ones would be what I recommend, but like I haven't actually tried it. So yeah, that's just my guess. Um, yeah, so that's all I want to say about uh, the Joe Nimble Wonder Toe and like my process of research for now. Uh, yeah, let me know what your thoughts are and uh, how did you go about choosing your hiking boots and what con conclusion you come on to. Uh, what do you like about the Joe Nimble Wonder Toe and what do you not like about that? And what if there's uh, any improvement you want to see in the barefoot hiking boots well so maybe hopefully together we can nudge the the supplier and manufacturer to design a better pair of boots for us for the future